Hello, and welcome to a Flat World Demo and Review, where we discuss the numerous adventures and fun that can be found at the table over a board or card game. My name is Gary Brand, and I'm excited to review today's game with you. This is because there are many cooperative games where you have to utilize strategy to outscore your opponent, but there's very few where, to win, you literally have to get ahead. So, today I'd like to present a quick and fanciful card game by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, called Guillotine. The Guillotine, which was the chief means of execution of the oppressive nobles during the French Revolution, even continued its use until 1977. And if you think horror movies of today are gruesome, imagine people flocking for miles around just to have their picnic lunches and stand in a mob as nobles such as Marie Antoinette were lined up and led to this gruesome device to have their heads chopped off. I mean, there was even cases of... The game does have a dark theme, but the creators have utilized whimsical artwork and tongue-in-cheek humor to lighten it up. Guillotine takes place over three rounds called days, and at the beginning of each day, 12 nobles will be lined up. Each player will take turn utilizing action cards in an attempt to manipulate the order of the line. This is so that the one at the front of the line will earn them the maximum points possible. Then the next person will take their turn, and after all the nobles are gone, the day ends. At the end of the third day, the points are totaled with the person having the highest score being declared the winner and the most successful executioner. Guillotine Card Game is designed for two to five players, but works best with four. Once everyone is set, take the two sets of cards. The first set is shuffled and contains all the nobles for the points you are attempting to earn during each of the three days. Take that one to the side and the second set contains all of the action cards players will use during their turns. Making sure to shuffle this deck, you will then proceed to deal five cards to each player. After all cards have been dealt, you will take both decks and place them to the side, and you will want to make sure that you leave space for a discard pile. Now that you have dealt out the action cards to each of the players, Go ahead and pick up the noble deck again. Now you'll be able to take the first 12 nobles from the top of the deck. Deal them out from left to right in an orderly line. This will be the people that you will select to earn points from. As you can see, there are going to be very many different types and each with their own special abilities as well. Once you have them all dealt out, go ahead and take the beginning of the line at the right hand side and that'll be the start of the lineup. The person chosen to go first is done randomly, at which point then that person will then look through their action cards and choose one to play. I'm going to choose the Ignoble Noble, which states that I can move a noble forward exactly four places in line. The strategy aspect of this is that I can find a better card farther down the line and then move it to the front. This will allow me to get the better card and the better score, leaving worse cards for the next player. The noble I selected at the front of the line now becomes the Fast Noble, which states that I can collect an additional noble from the front of the line after I collect this noble. So with this card, I am now able to draw the next card first in line. That will add even more score to my play. Then I will move the hangman closer and draw another action card, ending my turn. The second noble I got to collect is a palace guard, which states that each palace guard is worth a number of points equal to the number of palace guards I have, which means that if I have two palace guards, then each of them are worth two points. If I have three palace guards, each will be worth three points. So it's a good strategy if I think I can get a large number of palace guards in my hand. 
The person to the left is the next person to go. In this case, I don't want the negative one points of the person at the front of the line, so I will play Bride Guards, which states that I can move the noble in the front of the line to the end of the line. So now I'll take this card and place it in with the discards and move the negative one noble all the way to the end of the line. This now changes who's the first in the line. The noble now at the front of the line is the unpopular judge who has the benefit of stating that no player may play an action card while the unpopular judge is at the front of the line. So since I've already played an action card, it's not a problem, so I'll collect the unpopular judge. With the unpopular judge at the front of the line, I will take him and add him to my score pile. Then I will move the hangman closer and draw my next action card. Some action cards are very general, while others are very specific. The card that I'm going to play is Let Them Eat Cake, which states that if Marie Antoinette is in line, move her to the front of the line. Wanting the Marie Antoinette, I'll take the action card and place it in with the discards. That way, I all have to do is find Marie Antoinette in line, move her to the front, and move the rest behind her. Being that she's worth 5 points, she's definitely a card I'll want into my score pile. Then I'll move the hangman closer, draw my action card, and end my turn. Not all action cards are rearranged to the order of the nobles. Some of them have very specific benefits to you. I'm going to choose the church support, which states that I can put this card in front of me, and it's worth a plus one points for each blue noble in my score pile. So the more blue cards that I collect the rest of the game, the more points I'll earn overall. Since the card doesn't help me directly right now, I'll select it. Gameplay can go very quickly then with each person taking turns playing action cards, moving the line forward, discarding, and drawing new action cards. In fact, you can draw an action card without even playing one. There is no maximum hand, just so long as the line keeps moving. The goal is to try and get the cards that will give you the most points. Eventually, you're going to come down to the last noble, and once drawing that, we'll end the round. With the completion of the selection of the 12 nobles for the first day, each player will keep the action cards that they have in their hands and another 12 nobles will be drawn out. This will be for day two. A third day will then continue and at the end of that third day, all the players will then total up their nobles in the scoring phase. For the scoring phase, go ahead and look at the bottom right corner of each card from Marie Antoinette's five all the way through the rest of the cards. These are your points. Once those are all totaled up, look at your action cards. For some, we'll give you bonus points, such as this church support gives you a plus one for each blue noble in your score pile. So we score an additional three points. The palace guards are worth equal to the number of palace guards in total. So having two palace guards, each of these cards are two each. Unfortunately, we have the martyr, which costs us one point, leaving us with a grand total of 27 points. One of the best things about this crazy card game is its theme, though some people will still find it a bit too gruesome. And in that regard, you can always print out a stand-up dungeon door. That way, instead of sending the nobles to the gallows, you can send them off to Les Donjons. And this new stand-up jailer can then act as your first player marker. That way, everyone feels comfortable. So for an evening of thematic fun, utilize guillotine with other short games, such as Raise Your Goblet, Splendor, Council of Blackthorn. With all of these together, you and your friends can share many hours in a flat world of revolution, renaissance, and intrigue fun. Guillotine is a fun and fast card game, if you don't mind the dark humor of its theme. The artwork is great, though I would prefer a better stand-up guillotine with the American version. It's very easy to learn and simple to teach, with only slight hand management strategy necessary for beginners. The game does have a lot of take that aspects, so it's probably better to play with a group who enjoy a more cutthroat type of play. Pun intended. Overall, this is a great filler game to have in your collection and is great to share with light gamers. This has been a Flat World Demo and Review, and we hope that you've enjoyed it. 
Thank you for watching our very first of many Flat World game reviews and demos. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified of more fun adventures ahead. Also, join us on Facebook by clicking on the link below for more access to much more content.